that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as an actor. A gifted and charismatic actress, Julianne Moore has the versatility to play almost any character she puts her mind to. From a motherly porn star to a suburban housewife, she can play them all and adds just the right amount of emotion to every performance. So when did she discover her passion for acting? Julianne was the daughter of a US Army judge whose job forced the family to move around the globe over two dozen times throughout her childhood. Moore claims this upbringing made her more adaptable and taught her a greater sense of emotionality in which she loved to explore through acting. After studying a fine arts degree majoring in drama, Julianne finally settled in New York and registered with the Actors Guild to pursue her dream career. Luckily, it began almost instantaneously in the daytime soap operas Edge of Night and As the World Turns. But in a few short years, Moore proved that she was destined to grow as an actress outside the stifling confines of daytime television and went on to complete a successful decade full of lead roles and memorable supporting parts in feature films such as Roommates. Moore was the romantic interest in this budding comedy and stood out because of her authentic performances during the film's dramatic moments. In terms of a movie, most movie stories are a little bit smaller. They take place you know, over a shorter period of time. This really, this really covers um, a whole, a great big piece of somebody's life. So it's, it's, for me, it's about how relationships um, change, how they mutate, and how, how you, how a person then changes through these relationships they have with other people. Professional relationships would be important to Julianne after she attracted notice from none other than Steven Spielberg with a mere three minute scene as a medical colleague in The Fugitive. Her work lingered in his mind when casting for the sequel of Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Co-starring with Jeff Goldblum in the underwhelming sequel made Moore a household name. But the capper for that year was a well-deserved Best Supporting Oscar nomination for her portrayal of Amber Waves in Boogie Nights. Acting as a drug-addicted porn star that plays mother to an offbeat film crew propelled her into every film buff's DVD collection as Boogie Nights quickly became a classic. I mean, we're so proud of the movie and it's so, I mean, the last thing it's about is pornography. It's really about these people and their, their aspirations and their, um, their dreams. And so I think people really responded to that and that was nice, you know. And it seemed Julianne's aspirations were all falling into place when she moved from one cult classic to another playing a disaffected daughter of a millionaire in The Big Lebowski. Her portrayal of a bizarre arty dominatrix really stuck in audiences' minds long after the credits rolled. And just like the stamp she left on Lebowski, Julianne wanted to imprint herself into the remake of the Hitchcock classic, Psycho. Some claim the shot-by-shot -shot colour remake of the film was unnecessary, but Julianne embraced the subtle scripting changes. What I attempted to do, when we were talking earlier about trying to, trying to make, trying to work with this particular style of script, um, and you try to adapt yourself to this somewhat, you know, naturalistic style. I think that in the, I think because mores have changed somewhat in the, in the old script. Although Lila was driving a lot of the action, she kept, she deferred often to Sam, and um, that was a difficult thing to kind of try to to adjust um and so i simply tried to make her um a little more aggressive than the way she was played in you know in 1960. julianne was now known for her meticulous character work and her role as a pill popping trophy wife of a dying television executive in magnolia furthered that reputation the range of emotion she displayed in the film is vast and really pushed her skill set it's easier for me to underplay stuff, to pull it back. And so it was a real challenge to find a way to be, to be really truthful and very emotional and huge, with, with huge things, with big outbursts and, and big gestures and, you know, um, and to make it, and to, and to make her, you know, really, really human. That's, that's what I thought was so, was such a standout about the movie, that it was, that it was grand and, you know, hugely emotional, but, but really personal. 
Julianne was ticking all the boxes with critics until she took over the seemingly impossible to fill role of FBI agent Clarice Starling, made famous by Jodie Foster. In the failed sequel Hannibal, Moore exuded her typical grace and ability in a role most top actresses wouldn't have touched with a side of fava beans and nice Chianti. Director Ridley Scott loved her adaptability and thought she was perfect to fill the cheap shoes and southern accent of Clarice Starling. Julianne is specifically as a, an actress, um, which is rare, you know, because she's a real chameleon. When you think of her, the kind of body of work she's done, um, and she's always different, to the extent that sometimes you have to say, who's that? Oh my God, it's Julianne. You know, that's really a talent, that's great. No two characters are the same with Julianne, and she decided to step back in time as a depressed 1950s housewife for the film The Hours. It's a clever, emotional tale involving three women and their interconnected stories spanning over different time periods. Each of the characters are linked to the story Mrs Dalloway, which studies the notion, is it better to live your life for your own happiness or others? After I first saw the film, I was really pleased and astonished by how well the stories kind of rely on each other, the way they interact and the way the women, the way the characters seem to be relating to each other. It's, it's kind of, um, there's a wonderful feeling of universality and of that sense of, of uh, reaching across time, I think. You know, you see Virginia writing a story and you see Laura reacting to the story and then, then you see Laura's actions resonating in, in uh, Clarissa's story. It's, it's very beautiful that way. But all these smaller scale stories weren't enough for Julianne. She wanted something bigger, dealing with universal human issues. And before Moore knew it, she was pushed into the dark for the sci-fi thriller, Blindness. He was making a movie that was about something that was so significant and interesting and about kind of being a human being in the world. I think so often these days, we, the, the movies that I read really aren't very big stories. You know, they're little stories, which can be okay, you know, um, like a coming of age story or whatever, or, or you know, you know, or just, just kind of a family drama. But this was something that was pretty, pretty important and pretty massive. And it's, it's you know, it's rare. And I think it's something that we kind of kind of need need right now. It's something that I'd like to see when I go to the movies. I've always been a big fan of, of Julianne Moore. I don't know what she has, but she's just pure cinema, you know. It's, it's amazing. Uh, we were talking the other day with Cesar, but sometimes we're framing and we have this standing, uh, replacing uh, Julie, you know, because we, we prepare all the light and everything with the standing. And we look to the image, there's something missing here, I don't know, but then we're running out of, out of time and we call Julie. And when he gets the, exactly the same frame that the standing was, you know, occupying, it looks like film. She has something, she has, I don't know, what is that? It's charisma, is, and, and she's really amazing. I mean, her, her, her ability of, of uh, expressing emotion is, is really, I'm, every day I'm overwhelmed by her performances. A common element of Julianne's films is her ability to successfully, and most importantly, tastefully take on nudity and sex scenes. The Far From Bashful Moore first braved it for the cameras in the 1993 film Shortcuts, in which she delivered five minutes worth of dialogue nude from the waist down. One of Julianne's most intense movie experiences is in the film Chloe, where she shares a love scene with actress Amanda Seyfried. So how did she approach such an awkward moment? We, um, we had been working for a long time before we did any of the love scenes. I mean, we had done, we had done pr pretty much the bulk of all our emotional work. So that certainly helps because by the time you get to something like that, you know somebody pretty well and you've been, and you've been working together and she's someone that I was comfortable with. And, and um, you know, it's always, whether you're doing it, no matter who you're doing it with, there's always a degree of, of um, discomfort or, you know, you think, okay, this is, this is sort of unusual. On the other hand, it's she was somebody who was very easy to be with, and Adam was pretty sensitive about it. So, so yeah, there's I mean, there's always a lot of laughter when you do stuff like that. But there's always a, I I laugh a lot whenever I'm, when I'm working on anything, because if I think there are things to laugh about, then I don't really enjoy my job. 
OK, so familiarity and humour is the best way to get through these scenes, which was lucky because that is exactly what Julianne shared with her co-stars in The Kids Are All Right. Moore's character is one half of a same-sex marriage, but it's trouble in paradise when Mark Ruffalo's character is thrown into the mix for a good old-fashioned love triangle. It, I think it's, it always helps to know somebody a little bit, and I do know Mark. I'm really good friends with him, and I'm very friend. I'm really good friends with his wife, and I think that helps too, actually. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're really good friends, and I hope they stay friends. <laughs> the only, I think, the only woman that I can have sex scenes with anymore is Julianne Moore. <laughs> But Julianne is a married woman herself, finding love with director Bart Freundlich on the set of his first film, The Myth of Fingerprints. Recently, Julianne starred alongside Steve Carell in Crazy Stupid Love and was pleased the film dealt with the idiosyncrasies of long-term relationships. I mean, you know, I think the thing that I like about it is it's sort of a comedic take on, on what can happen in a long-term relationship, that, that um, it's really, it's, it's nice to see somebody sort of ex explore that rather than, you know, so many movies are about how do I meet this person and fall in love with them and get married. And this one sort of starts at a time when they get separated and kind of are moving away from each other. But it's, fu you know, it's funny and it's really, it's, I think it's really sweet too. Looking at Julianne's career, it is obvious to see through her film choices and performances that she is dedicated to exemplifying the dramatic stories in life. But at the end of the day, what is it that makes Julianne the most satisfied about her work? I always say that about movies and about actors, that people really don't come to see you in the movies, they come to see themselves. So the best compliment an actor can receive is when someone comes and says, oh, that was me or that was my story. So I think that when people like you, that means that they've identified with something that you've played. So that to me is, is great because that's what acting is kind of all about. That's Julianne Moore, whether on camera or on the red carpet. She does everything with class and sophistication. Highly respected in Hollywood, I'm sure she'll bring her authentic and relatable acting style to many wonderful films in the future. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your Movie Network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and at mnc.tv.